good evening to you all. So my wishing pleasant evening. I wish to invite uh, uh, our Madam Engineer Kamala Gunawardhan to do, the, do a little introduction about the today's uh, lecturer and do the inauguration session. Madam, over to you. Thank you, Himal. Can you hear me? Yes, madam. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, good evening to all of you. Mm -hmm. I'm as uh, uh, engineer Himal in, introduced that I'm Kamala Gunawardena. Uh, I'm a highway consultant and a fellow representative of the ISL this year. And I take part in civil and sectional committee, and I am doing the knowledge share in leading the, that team. And we are working with uh, our uh, all the other engineers who are doing the presentation and to give some sort of a knowledge to our members. So I'm happy to involve in this presentation as well. So today's presentation is uh, under the title so "Suitability and Usage of uh, Standard Bidding Documents." Actually, this is a very very appropriate, timely appropriate one uh, that our participants as the civil engineers, you all can entertain and you can grab the most of the essence of that. So let me introduce the key speaker today who is present in this uh, our this subject. He's Engineer Brigadier K.D. Pereira, a chartered civil engineer with over about 40 years of experience. The Speciality of his is actually being the engineer. He has been held several positions in engineering in Sri Lanka Army and later as the director engineering services of the Sri Lanka Army, which has been uh, upgraded him or the promoted him. Right? He is a well established personality doing a lot of social activities uh, for the benefit of the members. Uh, I, according to my knowledge, I think he's uh, been an engineer uh, who has ended up with the rank brigadier in Sri Lanka Army. If I am, I think I am correct. Uh, engineer Brigadier Pereira has served as a council member for many years. Actually, he has worked from 2006 to 2012 uh, continuously. So he has, uh, I can understand, he has served many for the institution as well. So. Uh, also, he has worked in the civil engineer section of the company, so he knows what is the importance of his uh, contribution for this uh, uh, our members today. So, I guess uh, today he also I think he has uh, not I think I, he he has definitely has been a resource person at seminars conducted by ISL on contract administrations and. While he's been a regular contributor to various forums on contract administration, procurement guidelines, finance, procurement guidelines, financial regulations, and so on, he's a very active in the de development activities of construction industry. So this with this remark and without Further ado, I invite Engineer Brigadier K.D. Pereira to take over the stage. Please enjoy this evening with this wonderful, valuable webinar presentations. Thank you, everyone. Over to you, Brigadier Ms. Pereira. Thank you. Right. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and my friends. Good evening. I hope you can, you can hear me. All everything is okay. Ah, so we can hear you. Yeah, okay. then uh, the screen is okay sharing. Himal? Okay. Himal, yes. Please. Yes, sir. Yes. Right. right. Okay. Now I'll proceed. Uh, I'll proceed uh, now as it is. Right. All right. Right. Okay. Now the uh, my subject is the. I can't see the right suitability and the uh, and the usage of. Standard bidding documents, procurement guidelines, and manual 2006. I have put uh, public finance circulars on on right. Okay, that is because I think I am speaking on to the you know, to the private sector too. However, that uh, these things are required to avoid delays, issues, disputes in government and private sector contracts. I have given the references, all that. 
I want to make a special on this guide for contract management and procurement management issued by the Minister of Finance. It is very important. And the supreme manuals, all those things will be incorporated in my lecture today. Right. We go to the first slide. The contents of the presentation. Who create issues and delays? Public contract act number three is all there. Errors in the TC. Then deviation and deletion of procurement guidelines. I have put here PGR 5 to 1. I'll explain to you later. Why does we have a comprehensive set of bidding documents? Drawing schedule specifications refer 5 to 1. I'll explain that. Procurement entities are then, uh, then here now the procurement entities, employer, procurement committee members, and the technical committee members, functions and responsibilities, are number seven. Then, how to establish a transparency? Internal procedures of employees and delegation authority. That's another issue. It is not in uh, commensurate com com with the contractual responsibilities. Right, there are two some sites. I will put this one immediately. Contract administrator. Contract administrator, the objective of effective contract administration is to ensure successful completion of a contract according to cost, time, and quality performance, respecting the intent of the organization policies and procedures of the specifics and regulatory control. The responsibility of the contract admin function of a construction contract is to administer the contract signed between the parties, namely the client and the contractor. Therefore, the contract administrator is the person charged with daily administrative work due to the contract. Since the contract administrator being an employee's personnel, the employee has an obligation and duty to see whether the engineer or consultant does the delegated function and daily administrative work as per the condition of contract. A primary duty of the contract administrator is to monitor contractual terms and conditions. In other words, he or her should ensure both parties meet their obligations during the contract performance. As stated in the contract, no more, no less. In industry, the contract admin function is performed by the consultant oblique engineer. The consultant oblique engineer has measured the work done accurately and certified the payment certificates correctly and for the employer to pay within 14 days. Further, the consultant to the engineer should recognize and accept that they always have the responsibility to the public and act in a manner which affirms it. Contract administrators have a very responsible role to play. They must ensure as far as possible administration function done fairly, equitably to minimize disputes while ensuring the rights and obligations of the parties to the contract are maintained. Then the other one is the uh, acting contrary to procurement guidelines 5 to 1. We'll see how it is moving with the rest of the slides. Then I have a last at the moment uh, a guided a question a guidance for the employer. Right? We'll see what are these duties of the employer and the, the obligations of the employer. Introduction. Now, because of these uh, un 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 unambiguous uh, uh, preparation of documents, the, we speak of delays, issues, and disputes, which can be reduced, minimized by required by the Minister of Finance. So now this reference uh, supplementary 14 is a very important thing, only thing I will not put at the moment, it's uh, given by the Ministry of Finance. Now, using this document, now there's another area, SPD 01 and 2 documents. Right, that also mentioning about the suitability of the documents. 
Now, as we know, the present SBDs are one, two, three, four, and five. But only thing, uh, my screen is having a little issue, but all creating problem. Right now, anything these uh, used for measure and pay contracts with the preparation of drawings, except in this SBD zero four, SBD zero four. Uh, that uh, measure and pay contracts, that drawings are not given. So we must see how, how it is happening. In SPD 04, it is essential to have a drawings and schedules refer 5 to 1. I will show all that at the, at the end. Now, we have a master procurement plan, and which says 35 and 30, given the preliminary approval and the final approval. However, I observe that the deviation in the Preparation of bidding documents for contracts invite under standard bidding document and especially in SPD 04. Variation clause has been deleted, and I don't know how this uh, the TC members have, uh, have uh, overlooked all those things, right? Risk is passed on to the contractor, right? And uh, we'll see about this 5 to 1. Now it says 521, specimen uh, forms to submit or draft bidding document. Are you using standard bidding documents? If so, what is the document used? We say it's bid either one or two or three or four. If so, did changes due to fall in line with these guidelines? If so, did changes due to fall in line with these guidelines? That is the crux of the issue in today. The like, uh, guidelines clearly says if, the, if you are going to do changes, it should be online with the guidelines. So do, no one can uh, go outside the guidelines in the preparation of the document. Right. Okay. Then, of course, in that case, there is no level playing field. That's, this is not a harmonized document. <laughs> Now, further in this drawing, in this one, we'll see this one. Now, in the design and build documents, these are the important things that, that they are asking. Now, third line, in drawings and sketches must be given for design and build. Today, I can see it is not happening. It is not happening in today's text that uh, drawings and sketches are not given, and it is only a day give uh, some sort of uh, uh, outline on on, on 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 lines, but you can't convert those lines into a uh, into a correct way of getting a good uh, estimate uh, by giving uh, without giving a drawing. So, and uh, we are violating today this uh, SBD zero four on that giving not not giving uh, what we call drawings and schedules. Right, these are some other things that uh, I am going to read all that. So when you have the area to get a higher degree of accuracy in the bidding documents, right? So that is the only way that we can uh, do without going for any uh, dispute. Then chapter three, I'm not going to read most of the things here because this is on, on the duties and all that. But here we see that if you are using foreign funded agency agreement required the procurement entity, resort to ICE procedures, speedy contract, all that must be done with suitable adjustment. Even turnkey pair, all that can be done using, using this our document. However, with all these things, financial regulations and all that, right? Uh, we see that uh, tenders given invited by the government and civil government and the private sector are violating the standard bidding documents, guidelines, everything. And thereby, you get all the delays and issues and issues are coming. Finally, loading the expenditure to the Ministry of Finance. <clears throat> then also in the, in, the, in the preparation of preambles, Again, this same situation is there, uh, not giving correctly how to prepare estimate. 
Now, because of these things, the Ministry of Finance has issued a guideline for contract management and project management for the infrastructure projects in 2017. May I emphasize the reasons for delays to a project, especially in termination. And in this case, it has made this mentioning that the TEC and the procurement members and the consultants must be right careful because due to this changing of general conditions of contract and inclusion of unacceptable specifications and clauses, and finally end up in adjudications. Further, the uh, further the the, the in, right only thing I, I I can't read that's a little bit of a technical issue here, right? Now uh, there are various pro construction procurements are there. They are superseding the procedures in the department. They are proceed superseding the approved SPD documents. That is the biggest issue. They have internal issues, internal uh, procedures. They think that these things can go, but finally end up in all that in uh, in the various uh, disputes. So I, I uh, expect uh, TC members and PC members to be very careful on this matter. And these are the guidelines that it is getting uh, violated. All these things I will come back one by one. And uh, if we can control, if we can do the correct way of preparing a document with these guidelines correctly, then there won't be any issues for the and disputes and thereby we are uh, helping the Ministry of Finance. Otherwise, we are loading with unnecessary funds. Now, I expect uh, uh, the consultants to be more careful in the preparation of this, right, this document. Now, we have commenced our construction activities from 19, uh, uh, 1948, right? And all that still we are coming up with different right? However, we noted the employer, employer procurement committee members, TC members, they have failed in their preparation of document. And not all, but some, and creating issues to the government. Hence, we require the preparation of unambiguous bidding document for the betterment of the construction industry. Further, the right to observe, mainly the, the now these, these four books, SBDC the one, two, three, four is quite sufficient to provide services for the government and semi-contracts. Quite sufficient, right? So there is no issue at all. But the issues are not with the content and the clauses. The adoption is documented by the prospective employers and uh, mandatory that these clauses are adjusted in inconsistent manner. That is the issue. Our employers, consultants, they, I don't know how they are adjusting these uh, clauses, which I only end up in issue. Therefore, we must discourage the modification of these clauses. So I request the uh, employers and the consultants to be very careful, otherwise these things will move into other difficult issues. Other thing is employment and consultants must be very careful when they are selecting. And because sometimes they try to dictate import department and internal circulars into this contract. That is the biggest issue. They are trying to import uh, department and internal circulars to the contract. So all things I had mentioned about these, the employers, client, procurement company members, they must be careful and they must strictly follow the procurement guidelines if we are going to move without any issues on this contract. Right now, there's a circular here. It should be. In, I, I will show you later that it, it is all the, circ, all the circulars. Now, this chapter one had the purpose of this objective: least cost together with higher quality. Chapter one, only thing. When you say least cost, I mean uh, you can have interpretation. They say value for money. Some say cost effective, but only thing we are always asking for high quality. But this has to be maintain least cost i got our inter interpretation saying that value for money and also now later streets also they are talking about cost effective then otherwise you can't maintain high quality right so these are the some other things that i don't want to read all that right 
scope of app, uh, approval app, applications, right? And these also, I am not going to read, but these, some of the things have been replaced or repeat. Guideline says the circulars, but when you read the circular for public and circular 451, and also if you go to 270 to 396, all those things are available. But then a Kian may this year and Tunsia at the Okom Pachigana did us a document together. I would ever the Vikal Paeva in a Turu by circular Sioma Balapatan. Foreign agencies, they expect uh, like their guidelines to follow, right? So this is their, their issue, you can't help it. Ethics in project, right? So this is also another area. I'm not going to discuss all that, right? Corruption, all that is there, but I don't want to say anything, but you must see that these things are not practiced. Conflict of interest also coming, right? No gifts, right, or can be accepted. Officials must be refrained from all that. Laws applicable to procurement action. I have one issue on this issue, right? And there's a sub supplementary issue, and uh, it has created a lot of issues on that, right? Now, I want to show about this side. Now, this is Public Contract Act number 3 of 87. It has come in the papers, right? So we'll see what is the issue on this slide. Now, I have seen in the in the papers and all the documents, they say this advertisement, this act is applicable to the main tender. However, with all these things that I have mentioned here, it is mentioned, it is not applicable to the main tender, right? So we'll see this slide. It has been issued by the Ministry of Department or Registrar of Companies. Then make it clear now. The principal tender is not required to register under this act. Right? Then make it more the person will not be in there. The person Then tender is not required. Then take call. First tender will be form made under the rule. But they are not submitted with the document. And Udima Duna, million of Panha could in Duna may tender. Finally, in me, thank God, uh, the race, uh, this appeal board has reversed back and uh, it has cleared. But I my, I'm my, I'm requesting the Minister of Finance and Planning that and the Minister of Commerce and Industry sort out this matter because it is creating a issue on this matter, right? I'm request the Minister of Finance to sort out this matter and remove that, uh, what do you call the supplement given. So that I'm telling this with authority, with uh, with the confidence. These are all the uh, functions of these uh, committee mem members and all that, right? So secretary, so the minister are responsible, chief accounting officer. Now this is very important. Now two point three point one neka whether value ma value ka circular neka is a guideline neka make it clear that you know the value Before you request for all the payment PC, this must be completed. But only thing it is not happening. Then make a Makarakiani uninterrupted implementation of the project. Uninterrupted implementation of the project. Come with a Katakaran. The mayor take up Koma Ibrakaran, no ink, the Metana Katakaran, the Peno, land acquisition, resolving compensatory settlement, relocation or utilities, all that is there. But uh, it is not practiced properly, right? The mega handama, many may chakra lake in a daratina, budget taka denni. For pre activities from Mangana, Ibrahim Latina, here and out. But there are dahate, di Latina may budget estimate taka dan negila, but may make any matter, there must be an estimate. So by this circular, they have given that authority. Right? These are some other, I don't want to write the same, all those things. So I'm referring to the role of the employer, role of the employer means. That is their role at the moment, right? And uh, they, they should ensure with the contractor, these things are all sorted out. It's our department, all that must be that the, their staff is involved in this preparation.
Now again, these are other uh, joint responsibilities of the committees. I'm not going to read. Now at the moment, I think uh, there must be some TC members and the procurement committee members are now listening to this lecture, all right? So I'm requesting all that, please do your job, right? So that there won't be any issues on this uh, uh, delays and issues as mentioned. Now I will show you the, what is given by the Ministry of Finance and Planning that completely comes on the people preparation of the document, right? So these are all their work. They must see that these things are completed correctly. Right. So now uh, when you have um, uh, what you call thesis and all that, uh, they must complete all these things on time, right? So they can't say that this is more over their routine function. They must complete when you are given a project to be evaluated. And being another important statement here, specification is a dangerous area for inexperienced employees and consultants. Right? So I'm telling about that. Now, these are again the responsibilities of the committees, procurement committees. Ensure that the funds are available for the procurement action. Ensure that the, all these things are done, right? So before that, uh, in the meeting, um, before the project is awarded. And these are some other duties they have to look at, look into, right? Okay. Evaluation committees. Now, this guideline 7.2 and 7.5 says that technical evaluation committees must, com must complete their Evaluation in 50% of the time. Now, for example, there's a if there's a contract between 25 and 250 million, the what they call the bidding period, uh, no, bid validity period is 91 days. So they must complete everything between 50 50% 50 of the time. They can't take more than that. We can't have excuses on that. That 53101 is that, that giving all the details, right? So TC members must see that when you are given evaluation, they must complete 50% of the time and so that there won't be any extension to this uh, uh, document. When you extend, there will be a lot of issues. Some of the contractors might go. So don't allow these things to happen. You have to take extra careful and extra work and do that and complete the project, this uh, TC evaluation. So these are some other things that is coming up in this, in this one. We see the 5.6 specification. The make again of precise and clear specification, right? So I am speaking to the employers or the consultant, right? Are you preparing that way? Only if this is done, the objectives of economy, efficiency, and fairness in procurement be realized, right? Okay, fine. That has to be done by employer. This employer and the TC members see that these things are done properly. And this and specification must be all practicable, not impractical specification. I have seen specifications sometimes are not specific and they are conditions. So those must be sorted out. And uh, wait, I made a mistake here. Just excuse me, I have made a small mistake here. We'll close this one. All right, okay. So that's the slide on the 26, uh, 5.6. Then I have shown you 231, I'm not gonna read all that. These are the, some of the things uh, that is have to be done by the committees. Approve and issue agendas. Then review the draft contract. These are all done for that by the uh, by the employer and the TC members, and they must see that these things are done properly. 
the suitability of the document depends depends on how you prepare the document and the usage. Before come to usage, this has to be done properly. Composition. Now here, but that uh, when you have the, your team team, you must have some officer the knowledge of procurement procedures. Public finance records all must be there, so at least they must know that except for public specialists. If they want any expert advice, they can take it uh, from the members of the institutions, but they can obtain only assistance only. However, the TC is responsible for the entire technical evaluation. This is something to monitor the evaluation of these things, right? So my, my sentence is, we have noted many violations of the procurement guidelines, manual and changing general conditions of contract. Ambiguity is created and thereby many calls or disputes are coming, which becomes a burden to the country. Please check internal procedures in the departments. So these are the, some of the things that I have observed. I will tell these things because otherwise it becomes finally, it is becomes the victim is the taxpayer. Limits of authority all are there. That's why I don't want to speak on that. They are raised by these uh, additional circulars, right? Pre calling of bidders, right? So, there is uh, these are some other things that is coming up in, in the evaluations. We'll see something on that. Pre call mainly qualifying criteria, experience and past performance, resources available, person, and all that. That those are the factors that they parameters, financial resources. But I want to show this one. The main circular key can be eligible requirements of the key and works contracts. I am coming to see arrangement of cash flow for the proposed construction may request documentary evidence for three months cash input. However, restricted requirements such as bank facilities exclusive for the proposed work should be avoided. Should be avoided. Right? So now this is a matter that I, 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 I am not. Uh, I have heard, I have seen, sometimes they're asking exclusive for the project, right? Whether it is uh, the statement is correct, right? So they can't ask exclusive. I have seen in the documents, exclusively we want for this project, right? So this is uh, some sort of a debatable issue, but however, I, I have mentioned it, this is coming up in the, I don't know if this has been changed or something like that, but anyone can uh, uh, do the question and the uh, time. They can explain on further on this matter. Now, this is the chapter four on this map uh, monitoring and planning. All that I have put some circulars here, right? This 358, one, two, three, very important on the project monitoring. Procurement action should not be commenced without the firm commitment of funds. Employer shall answer for that. This, uh, this circular says the employer and the contract, uh, this circular says engineer and the accountant are equal response to see that the payments are done on time. That's what this says. Master procurement plan. Now these are all for the members of the procurement committee and all that, and they must see that these things are done. But always there is a project director who is monitoring these things. And then uh, based on that, yeah. These are some other things that I don't want to mention all that, but I have mentioned here all that comes under the evaluations. Respond to the drafting stage and all those things. I'm reading all those. These are issues of the procurement committee and the, the TCs and all those they have to do correctly. If you do all that, then only the correct way of getting a document will come out. All right? Now, uh, recently I saw there's a new circular has come on this in 2018. And uh, when I when I noticed this, when I when I inquire about this from the from the Ministry of from the Public Finance Division, they say this has been suspended. I know the reason, I didn't want to mention here. 
ประเด็นที่มีอยู่ก็ดูที่เซอร์กูเรนซี่ว่าเขาว่า that been that been suspended given in 2018 and suddenly that been suspended I put this slide here. Just see the what is that variation slide? Who is the engineer to the contract? Do the employer staff aware of the different functions to be performed by the engineer as defined in the contract and the engineer working in his organization? Engineer is working in his organization. How does he or she derive authority in administer contract from the head of the department or from the secretary and all the administrators? In order to proceed with the contract as per the general contract and contract data, the employer shall delegate the authority to perform the contract, and the employer shall monitor monthly the variations approved and the cumulative value of variations for the attention of the accountant and auditor. That is a very important area. But anybody can question later. But this is what is to be done. Now this is on the preparation of this total cost estimate. These are given maximum five percent, ten percent, all that much is given, right? So that should be shown separately. So total cost estimate is also creating a lot of issues, right? Now this is another thing that. Uh, Now this is the circular on provision of total cost estimates. Make your comma circular. Then I can run on another figure, right? So then uh, direct construction cost, all that explanation, the uh, price escalation, all that has been given. But you have to abide by that. Right? If the If the this what we call uh, uh, this total cost estimate has taken a lot of time, it, it has been asked to before you do that. Uh, you had update again, and then uh, prepare it. Now uh, I have an issue on this subject. Uh, now in the in this preparation of this estimate. Now this is SBD zero one. Now it says the. Uh, Construction period more than three months. You had to allow for the allow for the in the price in in the document. But I have seen they are all deleted that and uh, not following the conditions of contract and also not following the what do you call procurement guideline. So they take their into their hands employer and uh, consultant and they delete these things. And create unnecessary issues. Now, this this has been done by a national practice, uh, procurement agency with after all so many, right? Now, this if you when you remove this, there will a lot of issues are coming, and already it has started, right? So now, I request uh, they should abide by the guidelines and not to <coughs> interfere in what is. Uh, What is required to be given in the when you say it is mandatory? That means the mandatory is that the price decision process is deleted. I don't know how the employers are behaving in that manner. It's very unfortunate. Now there's a special circulation on certain points. Small and medium gate contractor. I I will respect this uh, this uh, circular issued by the by the by the Minister of Finance. Right, NPA. That make it clear that in Mugut Nevi, small and medium contractors are not. Because of the fact that the other points are that we are not going to have the deep NPA head work. It is not going to be clear that even if there is an issue for lesser duration, she can about this chief uh, uh, secretary can can give. Not to half on the three months and all that. This is for small and medium sized contractors. May make any worry, may make a no matter. Right? Then another way, person, then what we are doing, how we are doing. 
small and may make a NP at a Kataka Boma, they have relaxed that. The circle is there, right? Okay, we'll see. I'll, I'll show you. Make you know, however, it the procurement need to request. Price variance formula may be used even for works less than less than lesser duration. Three months from time now, I should make it a, a, a small and medium contractor deal at the So we are, we are trying to be going against all that and say no, right? So these are not uh, not uh, going for good. I mean, that's a regular thing. I pass a regular mic pass a pen and you got me better got doctor. I mean, financial regulation that you can. All right. Now, this is the most important chapter that I'm going to talk on about is when you say UV and all that. So I have mentioned about this 5.6 employees, right? Employee requirement against PDC of Wakam and Dam, Makataka, Dan, and Naki Kilati, liquid earlier than a person at the end, but I will speak to you later on that subject. Right? Right? Contents of the bidding document should be unambiguous. Right? The maker, Tamai Mita Aparatina, Lukum Prasni. Right? Unambiguous, Tina Katawa, Ne. Right? It should be unambiguous, always ambiguous process. I might be. Right. Then make it clear that you know how to use this book, standard bidding documents. How is that? Then make it clear, you know, is bid is suitable for all procurement. Right? Even public sector, private sector. Even the foreign funder projects that we have used and that should be done. However, on you can't do it in every place, but only thing, if there's anything you must get the prior consent from the ICTA. Right? Now, the bidding documents are not standard. 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 Now, the bidding Massive uh, financial issue. Five, three, one. All the given, all the books are there. Now these are some of the circulars which I have already explained, right? All these documents must be right vetted by the by by the by the committees, right? And they can't avoid that. Again, I'm bringing this uh, specification means a uh, modification and addition to the approved engineer, right? But dangerous area. Now, these are the other circulars, all that I have lined up here, right? And I have explained certain, certain things, but anyway, right? I have a limited time and all that. So, anyway, these are the corresponding areas that we had to look into this. Invitation to bids, all that is there, correct? These are standard things. Eligibility of bidders, but this says uh, if any, any contract is backlisted, he should not be, right? <coughs> Must be given a contract. No contract shall be held to any contractor who has been engaged in procurement like in various things, right? These are some other things that have been seen by the <coughs> our TC members. Now, this is something that coming up uh, now, it charge for the registration. They say you can, if it, when you're going to get a bid, when you're collecting the bid, it charge registration, if it has uh, got less, then you can correct. But when you're submitting the bid, <coughs> when you're submitting the bid, you have to get that updated from the, uh, from the stick card. Even ICB and all that, that is same thing, right? Mm, you know, you know. Hello. 
Foreign funded projects are the same thing, right? But only thing you have to follow. But I will I be uh, put in this slide for your information. South Cape has issued this circular. This in 2005. Right? The billion document should define price and payment conditions, including local and or international, all that given must be there. Price adjustment procedures must use an adjustment formula. All contracts for contracts with high inflation should have price adjustment. For countries with a stable currency, price adjustment should be included for contracts longer than 12 months. Price adjustment formula should not be used in bid value. The above clearly indicate that variation of prices or fluctuation of cost and materials for countries such as Sri Lanka are applicable from the inception of the contract using adjustment formula and paid to the contractor. This application of adjustment formula for contracts longer than 12 months is applicable only countries with a stable currency. This I got the circular from this uh, Dr. D. Silva. So if there's any uh, issue on this matter that we have to see that presently the situation is not good. So therefore price adjustment must be given for contractors. You must not uh, stop all that. Then advance payment is that 20%, right? Hmm? Now, this is all another issue that has been sorted out. Now, if you read the circular 3643, it says no bonds are required for wet Because issue 364C it says not, not required wet component. Either I'm saying the advanced account 20% plus that Dalrama in the accountant in line, right? So finally it has been changed and they have put a new circle has come after four many years. It says, I'd like to inform you that the advanced payment guarantee may not cover the wet component, right? So this is after so many years, for five, six years. This has been going on and finally. It has been sorted out. I want to mention about this slide. That may circulate a acceptance of guarantees and security and guarantees. I may get that. And is they say for insurance companies, but all security and guarantees should be on demand. Devani Kamitana Kiyanne, federal department or the exchange agency should ensure that the contract period is realistic and only if he's satisfied that the contract has delayed the contract, deliberate or perpetually, the performance bond can be claimed. Then Metana may kata in it when you do the termination. Terminate Karu Gamanga, then the employer start in cash in these things. But anyway, they must see that before you, even if you terminate, but these things must be done. If they are uh, paid, then all that must be considered. And also, uh, uh, considering all that only, that it should be in cash. 
Hmm? I will show this one too. Then metal tire gap here, you know. When right, when you uh, when you are paying the advance guarantee, the when you advance payment, it has been told that to inform these insurance companies, uh, it, it is not only insurance companies, construction guarantee fund, banks, everything. The employer must write to the bank and say this today, this is the situation of that the a bank advance has been now deducted, and this is the present amount that is available. These are this has to be done for good practices. Sometimes the accountant say that is not in our scope and all that, but uh, when the advance is getting reduced, you must inform them so that. That is better for the contractors when they are getting another, what do you call, uh, guarantee. Retention of construction works and all that. I have mentioned about this performance security, 20, right? I have mentioned about the circular format. Encashment is a very, very big issue. That has to be done sorted out correctly. For home security, for right. No, I have mentioned about this payment of value added tax, no guarantees of that component. Specifications I have mentioned that has to be done properly, hmm? not impractical specifications. Specification is a dangerous area for the inexperienced clients and the consultants. So we have to be careful on this matter. Clear and precise. Specification must be given and they are given in the third also, right? Employers requirements SPD 04. We'll see this slide. Now, now this is the employer's requirement in SPD 04. The make a kilatina vidyata unata, name a lira dam my kila, make a convert current a bag drawing a gun natua, be okay, but a current. Right? So we have misunderstood this. That's why I don't want to talk on this matter. I show a slide. And then it has to be given when whatever that is given here. The contract able to convert this into a into a getting a video quite and correct. Otherwise, after every time. They say this is not up, this is not what what is what we request, and this is what you are giving, and there are the clashes on that. Right? So this is uh, complete. We are misusing the SPD04. So we will see how that has been sorted out. Extension of bid value period. I, I told you that this should be done. There's no you can't give excuses. When that validity period is 91 days, you must complete within 50% 50, 50 time. Take your routine time, all that, do extra work and finish it off. So that yeah, if you extend it, there will be issues to the, for the employee, right? After getting up the bid document done, there will be issues for them, right? Now, these are another the major stages of this examination, validity of bits, discretion, all that there, right? Then, uh, right. I want to tell something about this, right? There was a tender uh, of 5 billion, something like that, and then uh, uh, 4 billion, the two tenders, something like that, right? Okay. Now, we saw this uh, 4 million bid has not been signed by the employer, by, by the contractor. So now according to the uh, rule, if it is if the former bid has been signed, not signed, it has to be, you can avoid it, so we will go to the next one. Next one is 1,000 times better, 1,000 times more. Can we have that type of situation in the country? So, Thousand million is going because of this signature. Why can't we give that discussion to the to the TC or the employee and get him down and get that signature? That is up to you all to think of that, right? So that's why I have put this here. Give discussion. Like a venture, what up to you? 
four billion ni kan Hyundai, but it has not been signed. I don't know whether it's uh, purposely or by mistake or something. So the evaluation has to go for five billion. Thousand million on public interest, we have to look on, look on to those things, right? Right, and that is the other issue. Award of contract is very important. Prior to the contract award, the P should ensure that the budget process is available to meet the cost of the contract. Letter of access must be issued within the validity period. Our TC members must work hard and see that uh, it is done within the 50% of the time as given in the, in the 5310. I'll show about this 531. Right, 871. Now, this is guideline. So, funds should be available. Now, execution of contracts, you must have a, what do you call it, some sort of a agreement must be signed. Right? Now, in government department, there's an issue on this matter. I, I want to show this slide to you. Contract agreement. Now, employee is the chief secretary, employee is the uh, uh, secretary of the ministry. He is not going to sign for 25 million contract. So that has been delegated to the down the line. Only thing uh, we can't expect uh, in, when you go to education and all that, employee has not signed. No, this is as per the 8.9.23. We have to accept that uh, he is not going to sign small contract, but it has been, de it has been delegated and uh, 25 million, 100 million like that, more than 500, all that is there. So we had accept <clears throat> when the contract agreement has been signed, it is also on behalf of the employer. Publishing a contract award must be done, right? And it should be done and get the others to say what they have done and all that. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see this 8.12.2. Certainly not work. Now, when I when you see this guideline 8.12.2, make a key the consultant has issued the certificate completion that the works have been carried out according to the specification agreed with the terms and conditions. Payments are certified in accordance with the conditions of contract. Then I'm asking what is the delay? For the accountants to pay this money, pay this bill. What is the delay? Now, conditions of contract says as this same thing, they say we get the guidelines. It should be done accordingly. That means 20, for example, 21 days for the engineer, 14 days for the employee. So this is also in line with the guideline, right? So then there cannot be any delay in the in the payment issue. Please note all accounts and auditors to follow. Right? If there are anybody now in the in the audience, right, they can question me at that time. Contract administrator, 21 days to the consultant, 14 days to the employer. This is another important area, variation order. The conditions of contract we normally empower the employer to vary to vary all that is given there. Up to within the approved limits. Now, mum, me, I got a lecture. I can't remember. I can't remember. No, it is wrong. Add with the consent of the contractor. Can't hear me. Mum, no, real thing, no. He said, "I am a current value." The maker, IAS, will give impression that the man, the shari, got the NPA, got the car. That got a thing. Why? How would that employee given all that? Power here. Yeah. Now they answer, they say procurement guidelines do not allow employer to change the conditions of contract unilaterally after signing the contract. Right? And they say it cannot be done. But employer, as an employer, they say their quantities are exceeding, then the way he may require some, you know, some variations and then he should be allowed. That is. <clears throat> And what they say is the but employer has doing this request for his requirement 
as per the procedure given in the guidelines. But the Treasury writes further and say, however, issuing the contract variation order is according to the conditions of contract. The Mitana Kilatin employed only a current plan. Now, here I know interpretation again. We can employ a Puluanka in one variation like our Shakama gun. You can't stop that. Then he has to approve these things also there, right, in the as per the financial regulations, but on the right. But he says that it should be given. But the issuing of the variation order is in line with the with the conditions of contract. Right. Okay. So these are some of the other uh, variation orders. Always a uh, contract variation order is given because to obtain approval from the financial matters. <clears throat> right. So these are some other approving areas. Approving authority when condition is exceeded. Right. I'm putting this uh, slide for you. Right. Now the uh, treasury says it's a high burden of the P and the government. Right. The item was making when the variations are so much, they say that you are, you are diluted the procurement process. Who are preparing the document, they say you are diluted the procurement process. All the professionals, all the everybody has prepared the document, and finally see that so many variations are given. And they are writing and say you are diluted the procurement process when awarding the contract. Right? All everything must be taken. But anyway, we circulate in a weather However, anyway, saving segment on the reduction of countries or deletion of items can be paid without any without the following the normal procedure. Right? So ISL have been fighting for this issue since 1997. If there are any savings in the in the quantities, ISL has been has been explaining to the Treasury. Right, so uh, I can remember most of our, our presidents have had fought for all that, and finally it has appeared again in the in 2007. Right, okay. These are some of the things that is going. statement If the current variation due to any change in scope, explanation from the procurement entity. Why it has not been forcing at the design stage? I design stage is make a make a humble net figure. Right? So that's this was another big issue. Right? Why it was not forcing at the design stage? These are the things that is coming up. You must have a good employee, must give a comprehensive report for the consultant, and the consultant must prepare it properly. In the Mata Mekan Katagan Gutem Matina building that you know, then then a high methodic good in Yana. Electricity board, you have power cables, high. I think Ghana, Tatu, the building Ghana, I think it was better than Taravenuma, change, Granana, various things are happening. So these are some of the things that are on my experience. But anyway, this should be taken very carefully by the procurement entity and see that this is done properly. Extension at time, yes, must be can be given, right? But anyway, we'll see these three slides. Right. Yes, you can read it slowly. If there's an employee delay, this is the rule. Right? And it delay impacts the completion of the works, right? And this will only leave LD from the, the contract. But taking over the prolongation cost is not easy. He must prove that there's no other no other delay, right? And then then only that he may be able to claim that. However, this category delay is called the concurrent delay. Hmm? 
Rule number three, where a contractor delay to completion occurs concurrently with the employee's delay to completion, the contractor's concurrent delay should not reduce any extension of time which is due. Now, this is the most important area after reviewing all that uh, I'm coming to the summarized decisions. Employer in the professional documents must be done properly. Now, this is coming up in the preamble. Let me preamble again. Even the best of contractors cannot, cannot quote for them. Even the best of contract cannot give a grade for these items. So these are I'm pointing the finger to the, to the consultants, right? So be careful because when you do all that, Definitely, they will come other way and try and say that these are not up to the not required. Not this cannot be done, and they will ask for a, what you got a claim and various things will be locked. Up. And finally, the projects are getting delayed. But please ensure that this in the preambles too <clears throat> that you give something so that this has be can be quantified correctly. Right, summarize presentation of the violation of procurement guidelines. Price adjustment, don't delay. I explain all that mandatory. Internal procedure, right? Government department. These are all illegal if you, if you delay, delay it. They are deleted. Now, letter acceptance, right? Now, letter acceptance is a very important thing. Then, letter acceptance again, when you're reading, it should, not, it should include free from new conditions. Now, this is make a violet color in a consultant, a Hamar employee. They include unnecessary things in this letter of acceptance. It clearly says it should be issued within the validity period and free from new conditions. I employ, I consultant, I mean, with new conditions, right? Because they make Kilatina import how they for the construction. Ahanoni, Akhitana Kilatina. Very good. Perform security takers, then a Dowsa Kiangati. What is the amount? I have seen some other letter of accident, make Kiane. Right? Perform security, Diniak, as a contractor, to have a better garang and perform security, then a commencement date, then a deal. Right? So this is something on that, but we are very careful on these matters. And uh, uh, so when you are, say perform security shall be submitted or no before date. Because 28 days uh, security is there, but you must ensure that before at least seven days or 14 days, get the performance security and see that you tied in down for the contract period. Now, I have seen now they now in this letter of acceptance, they are writing uh, the extension is uh, when granted, no cost for the extended period. Now, these are some of the things that is coming up in the, in the letter of acceptance. <laughs> Review must be done by the NPA. Now this clause has been deleted. 13.8, right? I don't know how. This has been deleted. So that is the situation. And SPD01 and say that uh, these are getting modified or uh, deleted. Right, inclusion unfair cause and violating right guidelines, right? 521 is very important, 231 is very important. Again, I'm telling about this one, why it was not causing the change in scope. Payment delays, there cannot be that even payment delays are there, but you can use these eight point uh, new circular supplement with, uh, uh, given on 2007 for payments. Delay in obtaining tender board approvals for the variations. Why that? The tender board shall sit regularly and see that these things are done for, uh, <coughs> as early as possible. Otherwise, these things uh, will not move. Complete of statements, the data of acceptance, provisional rates are not given, pending. It is given correctly in the document, but delays in payment to quantity exceeding. Why is that? 
Now this I have, I know certain the uh, department they are paying at the end of the month, at the end of the project. Quantity exceeding and the variations are all that. I don't know presently are they doing it, but it has happened. That's why I have put it here. We'll just read about the design and build this document. I got this from another engineer, right? Now this <coughs> design and build procurement experts be experts believe that detailed BOQ should be given. All risk factors are to be managed by the contractor. <coughs> Some experts advise the public sector agency shall give less BOQ items as much as possible. <coughs> They strongly believe that claims are coming to the public sector clients due to detailed BOQ in the bid document for design and build contract. Natural tendency is to give all possible risks to the contractor and client expects an attractive financial offer as well. If resources are able and the competent line agency to prepare a detailed BOQ with quantities. However, it is the response of the employee to prepare detailed BOQ with quantities that done earlier in the design and build contracts. Is referring to FR 35 and 36, right? All that given there. Instead of that, procurement experts suggested to define the scope of work under employees' requirement and not to give a detailed view to white claims. Some public officers strongly believe that clients should not give preliminary detailed design and detailed view for design and build contract packages. They must give conceptual drawings as much as possible to support correctly. BOQ provisions are be given for soil inspection, survey work, all that must be done. Right? Then only you can get a cost effective design. In addition, design and build contract building projects, some government devices have deleted the very variation clause. Yes, I have seen which clause has been deleted. It's an illegal thing. Document, right? But it should be mentioned that the design and build delete clause, even unforeseeable, has not been there and passing all the risks to the contractor. National Procurement Commission should educate ministry secretaries and agency leaders and private consultants, organizations, in order to minimize the risk factors to the contractors and give details as much as possible with quantities and mini drawings in order to get an extractive financial offer. So these all have been in a way misused and even these have been for small contracts. So it has now become a design or some sort of fashion. Small contractors. Finally, my personal report is that common is that directly to the construction industry as well as the economy of the country too with illegal and corruption causes. All these illegal and corruption causes, unfair causes, triggers, issues, delays, and change, and adjudication of the projects and victim being the general public. Drafters of this billing document will be thinking that they have saved unnecessary claims and prove the government agents that they have prepared a good financial estimate to the employer's requirement. But they do not know the financial prevention they have done to the project. And finally, the procurement agencies give another financial burden to the general treasury when the contract is obtaining all dues and all dues under the common law with interest on the due date. Who is the victim of these issues, delays, etc.? I'll be failing in my duty if I do not mention the role played by our technical level members and procurement members in the evaluation of document. They should also be held responsible for approving the inclusion of illegal and corruption causes in the bid document. Without observing these deficiencies in the document, the various procurement are not only approved, but later contracts end up with claims in adjudications, arbitration, and courts where they will find it came all under the common law. So this I got from a, from an engineer and it has been given to the various to the national procurement agents. Right? Minor contracts, what does make that? So I am cautioning the consultants on this matter. Now public contract acts must must be must be must not appear in any of these documents, right? So these have been taken up by the by the ICTA chairman with the DGPF. There is another issue: the permits, license, approvals. The role played by the employer, not attended by the employer, right? Okay, not providing act. Not providing adequate assistance in obtaining permit from authorities. Called again by the Minister of Finance. I 
right now this is what i got from the that thing now we say failure in ending what the what the pride procedure the ministry is saying failure to obtain obstruction obstructions delays in providing instructions or drawings delays in making payments suspensions are due to bad management unnecessary interview interview test number 7 is the one that is with rough issue not providing adequate assistance to get approval of authority that is correct the employer and the consultant must take special interest on this matter i can see that the the, the what do you call uh, projects are getting delayed because when you say when the when i when i when you ask on the contract they say we have to go to the forest department we have to go to gsm we have to go to the uh, what do you call Uh, the department of various places they have to go, and even sometimes the the government agent, and then Pradesh uh, Sabha, uh, like them all places because they have to get this approval. But pressure is telling, not providing education to get the approval authority. So he pressure is pointing the finger to the employer and the consultant. You must take assist leadership on this matter, otherwise we can see. For sand, earth, various various places, how this the uh, how this without all that projects are getting delayed. So I'm pressing on that. We see that this is done for so that there be now again this delays in evaluation of variation, new rates, all that is there. Unreasonable, unreasonable variation, then. right? So this must be this is for the employers and the consultant. Right, please ensure with the contractor. <clears throat> don't send only the contractor to these places. You also get involved. You can see that this project is completed. Yes, they are given in page one hundred and thirty-five of that uh, this guide. Right, this guide is very very important. It has been prepared by some engineers also. Right. And uh, page one hundred and thirty-five, not providing correct contributions, reasons for delays, employer not providing uninterrupted interrupted in project. This guideline says, "Full one thing, give the reasons for delays." Yes, we do. Ah, this I we have already done. Quantity exit payments must be paid. The supply from entry fourteen has been given. There cannot be any delay. Termination in case no guarantees be disciplined, right? And if you see the page one hundred and fifteen of this guideline, it is clear now. Before you terminate the contract, you must get the pros and cons from the attorney general here. Our employers or the consultants are they go and do this in case months. And finally, as mentioned earlier, it's about man on, on the on the employee. So this is given correctly in the page 157 of the circular of this guideline. Get the pros and cons. They have seen so many terminations done, and finally end up in courts and and uh, paying the price. Practical, impractical, and distorted specifications. Some specifications are conditions. Then it clearly says how payment should be done, right? I want to show this slide for your information. Me slide ke kya ne dida se ke ka pressure yeng kya na? In some instances, the head of department. Has not been even aware of the extra work undertaken. Make a case like that. One hundred and fifty-nine estimated. Yeah, one hundred and eighty-nine. Well, in my thing, this something in the in the area of two thousand. Right. So thirty million has gone up. Head of department is not aware. Of it. So that is the situation. Yeah, we take a top comp program. We'll see this one. Then treasury and care, no? Right. You see, when you see that the cost is getting increased, 
apply for FR 72 and don't wait till the work is over to avoid delays in payments to contractors. This paragraph which I have given in, in yellow is very, very important. What is FR 72? Division of total cost estimate. Quickly, you must do it. The treasury say don't uh, not to uh, delay the project. But when the cost is going up, you must uh, go through the procedure and finish it off. The contractor is working. Variation order says no, you can't um, uh, avoid giving all that. Contractor says he's bound to do it. But you can say that uh, there, there are no funds, but only has some other contractor, they go and do it. But it is up to the employer consultant to see that these things are concurrently done without waiting till the work is over. The Madamedana Parahila Madahila, you know, I gave lectures in the three diet, the Madahana, you know, accountant gave me the bill and accountant done it. They go accountant to make a fear nit, accountant like some other consultants like your name, he fill up in my So those are the practical issues that is coming up. And how can we run? Right? So the that circular says 136 again, I forget that it's an you know, the certifying officer and the authorizing officer must meet and see that the funds are available because the. At the end, the end of 35 days, a, a, a bill is coming. So, I may may circular saying, "Hurry, whether God they will cut up or not." So that's why I am pointing. I not have nothing against anybody, but I am telling this because these are all <coughs> helping in the in for the contract the function. These are some other delays, right? Reasons for delays, I write. Okay, I'm I'm going, <coughs> I'm going a little fast. Time is also running out. Reasons are all given. Right, we'll see how. Right. There's some other things that is coming up. So this I have already spoken. Right, recommendations. Right, so. I have mentioned all these things while I'm talking. This is before all that. Right. Now we'll quickly come back to this uh, questionnaire guidance. Now, this is the active report, right? Employer shall ask the engineer the following question for the best practice in the project the contract to be implemented and complete according to the conditions of contract and the contract date. <coughs> the employer should seek the answers from the engineer for the as is. Is the employer's representative and suggest then the accountant and the auditor be there with the employer. When the employer questions the consultant, auditor, and the accountant, they must also be there. I don't know why they are, they are not taken to this meeting. I don't know whether this is happening in the country today. Right? These are some other things. Then, with an employer, do your ministry indicate whether the contract received drawings? Specifically, may Ahana or Minister employ Ahana consultant? Have you prevent the contract from performing the contract? May all these things I can I will give a hard copy, soft copy, right? But anyway, these things are very important. For you let me employ Ahana state or indicate the possible intention to claim additional time and cost employed here. Yeah, we know when not even may prasne among penguin circle. Employ time and cost. Yana kotha. A a issue ke. Yana no ne to the chief the chief accounting officer to the treasury funds. So these are some of the things. Then under the current correspondent request, you know, drawing specifications are not there, right? So employer, I know, is there any delay because employer is asking this because on behalf of the government, right? On the treasury, is there any delay? Employer, then again, no. Then what is the issue? Similarly, these, these things all has to be done, right? And may I put a balance on insurance bond guarantees that all that must be done. Progress of works under each view item must be done, right? Then the NCS, Galatino, Yapotakayahano, how, what is the procedure? What is the, what is the progress all that? Hmm? 
any material varies to the contract period or contract price with financial details on of, and then a person any make I if there anything anything coming from the future please let me know so I'll have to go to the treasury I'll have to speak to the chief accounting officer right so all that must be done right then with an may may then if you give us that uh, all the details excesses and savings and all that then that can be used for the payment so the employer again the pulang can run consultant there are savings here there are savings from the other side right so that then this can be paid right so you must arm with all those things i am speaking to the consultants some of the things that is coming up here right so we will see all that instructions nirman make it again do your instructions consider any variation has the contract confirmed the instruction as a variation has a request for cost and time have you approved the variation are there any correspondence time and cost have you responded is it going to increase the contract sum what is the amount have you informed me give me the details have you obtained my approval is there the mitana employee ahanama engineer again is there any delay from my end i have put your employees please note em ahanna one otherwise this is not going to run then may may karas may may ge ahanama is there any delay from my end hey employees please note These are some of the things that is coming up. So, I have mentioned about these things. Are you within the Are you within the approval with the contract date? Agi lahano variations. Me kaise hai? Bade gat nik. How many variations are approved? What is the cumulative value? Is it within the ten percent contingency? Are the contingencies are available? Is it within the allocated or that is there? Is this variation on the change the scope? Why it was not being foreseen at the design stage? right all those things are there right so have you changed the general conditions of contract why are there any correspondence clauses leading to delays issues all that right so this is this is that uh, this has to be done at the earlier stage but i am putting up here on this on this presentation regarding this Before you go for all that, uh, this question must be asked at that that time, right? So I will take under concern from the CIDA contingencies. How many all that is there? Have we exceeded authority? Completely correct uh, questions, quotations. Right, employer, have you changed the general conditions of contract? We are come to the end of the light lecture. We see, right? Can there be any ambiguity in the document? These are the claims. Have you worked out the budget for right? All that is there. All these are done in good faith, right? I have nothing, right? But anyway, this for the thing. Uh, so I request. At the end of the presentation, uh, right now, it's time for answering questions. I'm prepared to answer, right? So let us start. Thank you very much, sir, for your very well presentation. So I'll pick into the the chat box. Uh, there are several ah. questions. Uh, raised by uh, engineer Nimal Rana Singh, uh, so uh, I am raise a uh, one question. Do you justify the ad hoc practice of the addition uh, of undisclosed contingency provisions to the tender BOQ uh, total and issue the letter of accept acceptance? This amounts will be the initial contract sum and will be the basis of deciding the amount of. Performance bond LD limit etc. Yes, I can see your question is right. Uh, I would like to repeat that question. I got there's so many things that he has requested. 
But anyway, give, give me the, uh, at least some. Uh, can you repeat that question? Uh, as a very, very long question. Yes. Okay, sir. Huh? Yeah, I, I'll repeat it. Yeah. Just keep, uh, go slowly. Do you justify the ad hoc uh, practice of the additions of undisclosed contingency provision? No, no, you can't have that. No, undisclosed. This, uh, these contracts must be there are no undisclosed because this has been mentioned. That is why now we say that don't do any changes. Then you're asking for trouble. But so now uh, what I say is that he's asking something like that, ad hoc and all that. If you prepare an unambiguous document, you are, you, that answer is there. But after doing all that, uh, I, I, I will not be able to say that because it is then it becomes a bespoke uh, some sort of contract document and that is a uh, one-sided contract. Right? So you have to you have to discourage all that. See that guidelines are given, conditions are there, circulars are there, please follow it and do it. Why can't you do it uh, according with that? That is my answer by that question. If it is not enough, I think very long questions. I can we can take yeah. it to the ISL Brilliant Committee and also the Richard and see what he's asking. Right. What is the next one? Thank you. So another question is uh, to address the <coughs> undue delay in setting uh, settling uh, interim payments in the public sector and also to safeguard the rights of the subcontractors plus interim relief to the relief for the education uh, decision. Do you advocate a uh, statutory education regime with the uh, security of payment act be act? be the best solution <laughs> right anyway now uh, that's also too long but anyway let me know come by one now uh, I, I it's very difficult to uh, get that right come back again uh, Iman. so uh, that this is all the same uh, from engineer yeah. Iman rana singh uh, to yes. address the undue delay in settling interim payments in the wait 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 wait, 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 wait. Uh, we, we'll go on by there <laughs> cannot be undue delay Right now, uh, they're all when, I, when you see the circulars and all that, if you are taken FRC into action, there cannot be any delay. And even the savings are there, the, the treasury has allowed you to go in. Right? So, undue delays will not come provided that your document is also correct, but at the same time, vari variations are coming up that can be paid. If you are, if you are exceeding the, the, the amount and all that, similarly, you must quickly take FRC into action and sort out the matter. Rather than keeping for the last moment, that is, that is, I, we can't allow. I think I have answered that question. And there also, sir, that, any, no, no. excuse, sir. No. And also, he's, he's, uh, in this, he's asking about uh, also to safeguard the right of subcontractors plus interim relief for the education decisions. <coughs> that is, of course, now. Uh, now, these are some other, uh, best, if you have best practices, it, hello, if you now, the subcontract has to be paid, right? When the main contract has taken, subcontract now sometimes something like that. So that that those things can be done, right? Otherwise, with the various issues and all that, payments are not done. So these are you can't go back on this item. Now we have come 40 years of construction experience, and we can't be talking about that delay, this delay. Now, when you see that uh, the ministry has given the reasons for all that. So these are all contributing to all that, right? So employer and the consultant must take quick action that is what is required and then finish it off. The treasury says delay in payment to contractor. Treasury is telling. So we can't understand why the contract employees are not paying. Huh? I, can't, I, I cannot see because <coughs> these circulars have been given and that has to be followed. If you are not followed, these all these issues will come. What is the next question? And also in the same question, he is uh, asked. Uh, let's see the suggestion. Do you advocate uh, statutory education regime with the Security of Payment Act be the best solution? Uh, I only I'm, I can't I, uh, wait. Now actually, now uh, there is a uh, payment. Earlier, there was a payment uh, guarantee given by the employer to the contractor. It has been stopped, right? In 2002, I can remember, uh, because if there's any payment delay, 
there was a clause also there in the in the document SPD01. The contractor can get 75% with the employer signature from the bank. So those are the things that is has to be done. So I can't uh, exactly uh, speak on that. What the latter part of that uh, he's asking. So if I'm if I have not answered because this is some of the things you know you, you can't give all in black and white. There are certain things that have to be done, right? So some of the questions that he's asking also that that uh, cannot be answered in all in black and white. Okay, fine. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, the next question is: uh, Can the client go ahead with the addendum to the contract when they need to execution without agreeing the final resources required agreed by the consultant? Within the bracket, construction uh, supervision projects such as uh, man months required for the supervision team, and uh, can they? conclude and ask the consultant to sign the addendum? That is the question, sir. That is also too long. I think I, uh, I, think, yeah. uh, I so have to is... give the same answer that okay. uh, all that cannot be done by, by just asking this question. I think I prefer that this has to be a time anybody answer on in the, in the audience, if anybody is there, so that uh, he can get an answer on that. Otherwise, this has to be referred to the through the see to the CIDA and it just sorted out the matter. Right. Okay. But but it's another question. Uh, as for the attending or modification of COC, for example, empo employers use and add or modify the following contract con uh, condition through the contract data uh, for measure and pay types contract based on CIDA SBD. Are these addition or modification amount to vary violations of the SIDA by, uh, qualify, uh, by a qualified person within point directing maximum labor rate as base rate for the evaluation of basic rate for variation uh, provisional sums items SBD uh, 12.3 close. Another point, cap on maximum overhead and profit percentage to apply to basic rate in evaluating variations of provision sums items. Provision sum items. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, anyway, 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 his questions are very, very long. But anyway, yeah. right, uh, I have answered uh, in even in this one, it's very difficult uh, to get uh, in a, when you're asking in a place like that now. In various various things. Now again, I have to come back and say, modifying cannot be done. You must discourage. If that has to be, if that is can be stopped, if they can uh, respect the employees and the consultant, respect all that, these things will not happen. These things will not happen. So that is my answer for that. Otherwise, uh, by uh, all this, what do you call? You change the general. Part that is given in the conditions of contract and the guidelines, so that the unnecessary issues will not definitely not come. And also, I request the uh, uh, request the, the what do you call uh, 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 to sort out the matters properly, right? Because there are certain things uh, which I, I have uh, no control at the moment. Okay, sir. Another question is, I think, it's very important in this time. If the price adjustment is uh, adjustment is included in the contract, if we extended the uh, contract, whether we can pay the price adjustment claim? Yeah, that that, that is given in the conditions of contract. If it is extended, but the, there's a calculation is there, it should be paid. It should be paid. But only they take in these indices and all that from the last month. That that's all. But otherwise. It can be paid. You read that uh, the guy, the, the, the conditions of contract clause is there. It can be paid. Yeah. The next question: Allow lump sum for the for employing uh, <coughs> employees suitably qualified and experienced technical person of the full time basis for construction management service at the site. Uh, within the bracket, mode of payment in equal to installment over the contract period. Item. 
what is that what is that question huh? it is uh, as uh, allow lump sum lump sum for employing uh, suitably qualified and experienced no, first, first of all first of all i i must tell you right now when when you are deciding on a suitable qualified or person or that you must you know exactly what is what is the payment that has been done right so what i prefer is that this type of thing when you are preparing it should be on a provisional sum there can be any case so that when there is a ps item uh when you say lump sum there then you can't do anything so what i prefer is give it give a ps item and if there is anything uh, going above or something uh, we can use the condition provisions and pay, get that amount right otherwise there will there will be no will be not be any end to end to this uh, lump sum issue thank you sir the last question i think uh, this is the last question what what are the general practices where we can implementation and instructed to reduce or minimize the variation when progressing in an ongoing project wait 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 already i have answered by this question now can you repeat that question what are the general practice where we can implement and instruct to reduce or minimize the variation when progressing in an ongoing project wait 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 the point is this now we are again we are violating all that now the ministry has told don't dilute the procurement process employer must give a correct what is required he can't give half way the requirements to the consultant and consultant give us something when it goes to the ground what happens is this unnecessary things are coming up so i had to point the finger to the employer first of all rather than consultant he has he has done this uh, he has created this issue he has created this issue unnecessary yeah. right otherwise this question is uh, straight forward if you are perfectly prepared again i am telling you ministry has told die don't die with the procurement process we are doing all unnecessary wrong things and asking various things and uh, for their benefit no you can't do that we must have some sort of discipline on this matter yeah discipline on this matter. otherwise there is no yeah you can't have uh, if you uh, huh? do all those changes you ask huh? for trouble okay and then what is anything anything else imal i know sir so what what Can we wind up or anything huh uh yeah we can wind up uh, so before wind up by wish to cordially invite the engineer kadipan turey raja to do, deliver our vote of thanks uh, for our lecture and the uh, india turey raja over to you thank you himar can you hear me can yes can yes Hello. yes um, yes thank you sir you. for your great presentation engineer k time and we also like to thank everyone who participated in this lecture with a limited timing and also we are very grateful to the knowledge sharing committee and civil engineering sectional committee and the members of it if i missed anyone i am very apologize to them and i ask them for the great things they have done to us i acknowledge everyone once again for doing this great presentation thank you have a great day good night good night thank you thank you thank you very much thank you sincere uh, brigadier Thank you very much. Good night. Good night, Madam. Good night. Good night to all.